Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and today we'll look at what it takes to build a traditional shaker oval box. In the old-timey days, if you went to a Tupperware party, your host was likely to look like this guy. And instead of selling you Tupperware, he was going to sell you wooden boxes. John Wilson is an expert in essential shaker boxes, a must-have container for storing your coffee, tea, bobbins, anything else found in the 19th century home. Today, they're highly collectible, and they're loads of fun to make. So, as experts tend to do, John wrote a book. This is Shaker Oval Boxes Volume 2. Volume 1 was a treatise on the boxes themselves, but it's the second volume that tells you how to build them in amazing detail. It's well over 200 pages long, the quality of the hard binding is just exceptional, and it's filled with hundreds of photos, drawings, and patterns. I highly recommend you pick this book up when you're ready to build some of these historic masterpieces yourself. I'll put a link to it in the notes below this video. In the meantime, let's take a look at the steps involved in making a shaker box so you know what you're in for. Shaker boxes came in many sizes, which could be nested together, sort of like a Russian doll. This book contains patterns for six of the most popular, and you could easily modify them to make a box of any size you wish. But the first step is to gather your materials. You'll need wood that bends well. Hard maple is an excellent choice. Cherry was often used by shakers, and that works really well if the grain is straight enough. For small boxes, all the wood you need may just be found in your firewood pile. A table saw is an ideal tool for sawing the stock to thickness, but a band saw may be required for some of the really big boxes. How thick? Depends on the box. Most are built from stock between an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch thick. Of course, the top and the bottom of the box are thicker, but a quarter inch. You'll also need some forms, including a core, around which you'll wrap the box side for initial bending, and a pair of shapers for drying time. There are patterns for these in the book as well, so you can make them yourself. You may wish to buy a tray for soaking, and you'll also need some tacks. You can find these on the author's website. In fact, you can buy everything there, including the wood, if you like. Other than the oval shape, the most distinctive feature of the shaker box has to be those fingers on the side. These are cut on the end of the band using John's patterns and a band saw or a scroll saw or even just a utility knife. The tack holes are laid out and drilled in the fingers, and one end of the band is feathered on a belt sander. Now it's time to soak in hot water for 15 minutes before the band is wrapped around the core and marked so it can be removed and tacked on a homemade anvil, clenching the ends of the tacks on the inside. Finally, the shapers are inserted. These have slightly beveled edges, so one slips in each end like a cork, creating a tight fit so the box will hold its shape as it dries. Meanwhile, the band lid is removed from the soaking tray and bent around the box itself, where it's marked and taken off and tacked and replaced so everything can dry for a couple of days. Once dry, the top and bottom shapes have to be traced. Then they're cut out and sanded to fit. A drill press is an ideal tool for boring holes into the edge of the top and bottom boards, but this can be done with a hand drill and a simple jig as well. Toothpicks are used for pegs. That's right, toothpicks. And don't forget to sign the bottom before you apply your finish. That's basically all there is to making a shaker box. Of course, there are loads of additional details, tips, tricks, and advice, as well as some really cool variations in design in John Wilson's book. Believe me, once you make one of these, you're going to be hooked. So check out Shaker Boxes Volume 2 by John Wilson. You can get it directly from the author on his website, so all the proceeds go to this incredibly gifted craftsman who has distilled a lifetime of knowledge between these covers. As always, our book review videos are sponsored by Isotunes, the makers of high-quality Bluetooth hearing protection. You can listen to music, podcasts, audiobooks, all while protecting your ears in the shop, when you're mowing lawn in the yard, or anywhere you're exposed to loud noises. Check them out at the link below the video. See you next time.